Hi, this is Chris from Audio Discovery. Today I wanted to talk about the plugin menus and the different options that we have in Cakewalk by BandLab in order to put ourselves in a position to organize all of the plugins and effects that we can use in order to uh, be most creative and most inspired when we're working on our different creations in Cakewalk by BandLab. Now, when we download a bunch of different plugins from these different companies, a lot of times the categorization is a little off. And so what I found was I was going through these different menus and I was being distracted by all these other plugins that I was like, oh, hey, I saw this stuff. No, no, we want to make, I wanted to make sure that I was going through the plugin menus and actually tailoring them so that I use the least amount of clicks in order to get to my plugins and to get to my effects so that I can be most creative and most inspired instead of having to be distracted. So I wanted to share with you how I have been tailoring my workflow and my experiences so that I'm not being distracted and pulled away from what I'm actually trying to achieve. So let's, uh, I wanted to share with you, uh, let's uh, take a step to the screen and let's see what, um, what I've been doing. Okay, so here we are at the start screen. I wanted to talk about um, the templates that uh, you, you start with. Um, and essentially, like I, with the majority of the, the screens that I use, I start with basic because it gives me a template uh, and a bus um, to the master. Uh, if you go and you start uh, a new project without um, without the template, then you have to build that in. So I typically just use the the basic anyway. And the reason that it's important because uh, you have a browser that's already set up uh, over here that will give you um, the uh, the the menu screen. So this is an important. Uh, screen. Although when I first started using Cakewalk, um, I actually discarded this and I would usually hide it. Uh, but it's actually a really useful tool. And um, we'll talk about this in a second. So there's a couple of different ways of being able to actually uh, rev um, to alter your plugin uh, menus. And so one is the easiest one to get to is plugin layouts here and you manage layouts and that will give you this plugin manager screen. And you can also do that through utilities and plugin manager and that'll get you the same screen. Anyhow, uh, so you have your plugin layout, right? And I, when I first started, this made sense a little bit. Like there are, uh, let's get out of here. There are things in this layout that actually are pretty, um, they're pretty logical. These all were in my EQ menu, right? And so if, uh, if I, if I downloaded, um, the Sheps, this is in my EQ menu and it makes sense. It's logical. So dynamics, another, you know, so say for instance, uh, the waves limiter or H comp, those all end up in the dynamics menu, um, but what happens is, is that a lot of times you end up with uncategorized plugins and it's just a huge list. And so when, um, and typically when you're downloading free plugins, they'll end up here. And, um, like say for instance, when I'm going through this menu and I'm looking at access, I'm like, wait, what did access do? I don't remember. It's not in the menu screens that are going to give me the context clue in order for me to know what access does. So if I'm going to pull an access, I'm like, oh, okay. So it's give, gives me the imaging. I get mid side. Um, it gives me a compressor and it shows me how loud everything is, right? You get to isolate the bands. You get to select certain bands in order for you to do some EQing. So it's a general, you know, it's kind of a general effect, right? So um, in, you, and having this in un, and categorized, I would potentially overlook this, right? Um, like say, for instance, if uh, if we look at um, SoundSpot is kind of, uh, it does this a lot where um, you have these um, that are named a certain thing. So this is going to essentially give you some saturation um, depending on the frequency, right? So it's not something that you could just, I mean, you could probably put it in your distortion, um, but it's in your uncategorized and it's hard to kind of give a, get a sense of what that, um, what that should be. So um, let's talk about how to alter it, right? So you can either go into, um, one thing I did uh, was to 
um, build pl a plugin layout for myself that I would be able to. So if you go to favorites, now I have either mono or stereo effects. And then within that, I build folders and put in those folders what I wanted, right? So I know if I'm going into dynamics, I'm going to be able to pull in, you know, Shapeshifter, right? What is Shapeshifter? Shapeshifter is this weird compressor looking thing. Um, and Shapeshifter does not sound like a dynamics processor, but it is. It's a dynamics processor and it smashes the bejesus out of your uh, out of your material. So um, anyhow, uh, same thing with like, say, for instance, I Heart New York. We know that you know, from context clues that I know that this is going to be like a smashing, you know, the devil lock from sound toys. It smashes your audio. So I put those context clues so that when I'm thinking about how I want to affect my, um, my signal, I'm looking at, oh, okay, I want a stereo, I want a mono, uh, I want uh, dynamics, I want either a compressor, uh, I want something on my master bus, or I want to smash the crap out of something, right? So I left these out, like Nova, I use all the time. And so I want something that is readily available to me. Um, so I have Nova here, and then I also put it in my EQ because I use that all the time. Okay, the other thing is, um, so I have this menu that, uh, this plugin thing that I built on my own. And let's talk about how I did that. So you would start with a new plugin layout, right? And then you go through and you add what you want. So you have a new folder. Let's say this is a compressor. Ah, ah, we'll leave it. Um, so let's put my API 2500 in there because I know that I'm going to use that as a compressor. Boom, done, right? So you can have plugin menu for as much as you want, right? So they're going to end up when you go here, answer audio effects, you've got um, plug-in layouts, and then you'll just have this long list of the different um, layouts that you created. So, uh, so that's an option, right? Now, what I found interesting was I liked the categorization that started. And for the most part, that has persisted. Um, so meaning that when I buy a plugin from a company that is, you know, like they develop plugins professionally, um, typically they will categorize them at, in a way that would make sense. Like they all, uh, let's see, what did I do? Um, so like, for instance, um, I did not have to... Uh, I did not have to put API 2500 in Dynamics. Um, so that, that made sense to me. So I wanted to keep this this way, right? Okay, so then, uh, but I have all these uncategorized. Okay, so how do we change this, right? Um, so, so like, let's see. I have um, uh, this free amp, which is a saturation, right? So this, this gives me... Um, this gives me drive and then output, right? So this is essentially how to... Uh, put distortion in a mix, some saturation. So uh, I would put this under distortion, right? So if I right click, now I get this, I get a chance to rename it. So I could say free, I mean, in this one, in this case, I don't have to do that. Uh, and then I click here and I can send it to distortion, right? And boom, it goes out of uncategorized and it goes into my distortion uh, menu, right? And then um, so magic switch, uh, from baby audio, this is a, uh, what do they call that? Like it kind of, um, sort of this, like a stereo separation. So you just click it on and it'll, it'll separate. It's kind of like, um, uh, like a phase, uh, gives you some, some bit of phase, which, eh. but it's in, in uncategorized and I would, you know, I'd be like scrolling through trying to find something for you know phase or whatever right so instead what i could do is i can send this to spatial and panner boom done so now if i go to spatial and panner i have everything that i need uh you know i have pan man from sound toys i got wider um you know i've got uh, the imager so everything is at my disposal and i don't have to go through different plug-in menus to find it 
right? Um, so Lindell channel strip, let's send that to channel strip. Boom, done, right? I mean, it just, it makes so much easier so when you go through I could just sit here and go oh okay let me go to channel strip and now my Lindell channel strip is in there right okay so let's let's talk about um, something that's uh, like EQ specific right so let me just send this to channel strip just so that they're both together okay so if I want if I have something that compresses and EQs and I want it in both or um, so um sketch cassette i want to put it in my tape i put like i made this tape um category but i also wanted to put in distortion so i would add and i would put in distortion boom so now i have it in um now i have it in distortion so here's my sketch cassette and then i have it in tape here's my sketch cassette so you could put it in both and then if you're looking for something that's going to distort and you're saying, oh, okay, I have, I have sketch cassette and then I also have sketch cassette. So I do this very modestly because I want to reach for one folder with everything in it so that I'm not, you know, having to scroll through so much, right? Um, another thing that I found that I was unhappy with is the fact that, you know, uh, this menu screen does not roll out right, you know, like say for instance in, I think it's Pro Tools, um, you'd have uh, these different, you wouldn't have to, to, to scroll low or high. So here I'm clicking, um, but, you know, realistically it would be nice if it was sort of on the side. So, uh, and my jog wheel or my, my mouse wheel doesn't work here, but it works on, on this and this is what I, why I like this one. So... I would honestly go through and take all of the plugins that you've already done uh, or that you've already downloaded that you already know and put them in your, this should be in reverb. Boom, done. So now every time I go, I'm like, okay, cool. It's in reverb. I got it. Um, thump. This is a bass. Yeah, so this is like a bass generator. So this should go in bass. Boom, done. And so now... I know that anything that is bass specific is going to be in this, right? So um, Clipstar is, that's what that does. So that's in bass. Boom, done. So now I'm only, I'm not, I, what my goal is, I left a bunch of stuff in and categorized because I wanted to shoot this video. But my goal is to not have uncategorized plugins and only go through these menu options so that I have I can either scroll through this browser window here or I can go to effects um, and and add them here. So uh, that was something that was a huge revelation for me. I'm really happy that I found it. I wanted to share it. So uh, have at it. Go and be forth and be creative and be merry. All right. Take care.